This is Nine News. Good evening and thanks for joining us on Sunday night. A massive crowd occupied the Story Bridge today to celebrate its 75th birthday. In fact, there were so many people the bridge was in gridlock at times, creating lengthy queues and long waits for those trying to get on and off. Most of those said the wait was well worth it. It was the kind of peak hour the Story Bridge has rarely seen, especially not on a Sunday morning. The sound of which has produced yet another great story. What do you think of the bridge? It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful bridge. Phil Wilmington, Nine News. Kath Landers joins us now live. Kath, the clean-up has begun. When will the bridge reopen? Alison, Council hopes to have the bridge reopen to traffic at around 7 o'clock tonight, so in about an hour's time. And that's also... ...girls who vanished from a home on the Gold Coast three days ago. It's believed Emma Howarth and Holly Goodwin, aged 13 and 14, are heading for Victoria. Anyone with information should please contact Crime Stoppers. Patrols have continued in the skies above a junior surfing competition at Lennox Head near Ballina. The surveillance comes at a cost of $20,000. A powerful parliamentary committee will consider giving counter-terror agencies greater powers to protect their sources. It's looking at secret court hearings currently used in the United Kingdom aimed at stopping homegrown attacks. Reminding the world of its brutality, ISIL releases video footage of a mass execution. In the ancient Syrian... ...lost their lives in horror crashes within a few hours on Gold Coast hinterland roads. Police are appealing for riders and drivers to know their limits and slow down. The mangled mess that was a BMW. Last night, the car travelling along Bow Desert Bean Lee Road at Tambourine lost control, hit a culvert and rolled before bursting into flames. There was nothing that could be done to save the 24-year-old local man. It happened outside Penny Hendren's house. A welcome reprieve for aged pensioners tonight with the state government deciding it will continue to fund up to $710 in concessions. But the budget announcement has come under fire for not offering any rebate increases. Tonight on 60 Minutes, injured rugby league player Alex McKinnon expresses his anger at comments made by Australian and Queensland captain Cameron Smith immediately after the tackle which left McKinnon in a wheelchair. Sam Squires is with the Maroons at Sanctuary Cove. Sam, how has Smith responded? Well, the Maroons skipper is waiting to see the full story on 60 Minutes tonight before making any further comment. Now, this all stems from the moments directly... ...on as the most hated blue north of the border. But look, there were a couple of New South Wales fans there. They got some autographs signed. It might be the most support they get in Queensland all week, Darren, certainly ahead of Wednesday's big showdown at Suncorp Stadium. It's shaping as a huge game. Thank you very much, Michael. And Sophie's here now with a quick update on the weather. And Sophie, there's a chance ex-tropical uh, tropical cyclone Rachel um, could strengthen into a full-blown cyclone again. Yeah, Darren, yeah, at the moment it is uh, low moving in a southwesterly direction away from the Solomon Islands, but it is expected to reform into a tropical cyclone category one system at 4am tomorrow morning. Right now, it is quite a quite fair way away from the Queensland coast and doesn't pose a threat at this stage. It's also expected to weaken again back to a tropical, below tropical cyclone strength tomorrow evening, but we will be keeping a very close eye on it. This week, we've got more chilly and at times frosty mornings on the way, but the trade-off will be fine and sunny conditions during the day. I've got a forecast coming up soon. Great. Thank you very much, Sophie. Well, it's crunch time in Greece with the desperate country right now voting in an historic referendum that will decide its future. Reporter Amelia Ballinger is in Athens for us tonight. And Amelia, is there any indication on what this result will be? Well, the opinion polls have been neck and neck since this referendum was announced last week. And Darren of behaviour at this stage, but the police are very much on standby in case people's emotions do get the better of them. All right, Amelia Ballinger there. We are going to throw to a break. We'll be back with you shortly.
At least nine people are dead and dozens are injured after a shoe factory collapsed in eastern China. More than 50 workers were in the building at the time of the collapse. It's believed a pool built on top of the factory may have caused the tragedy. A 41-year-old barber has made history on the Gold Coast, running the fastest marathon ever on Australian soil. Kenyan Kenneth Mangara didn't just win the Gold Coast Marathon this morning. Lots of sport details, so stay with us after this break. The Royals are gathering at the Queen's Sandringham Estate tonight for the christening of Princess Charlotte. Nine's Europe correspondent Tom Steinford is in Norfolk. Tom, a joyous occasion. When is everyone due to arrive? Yeah, look, uh, they'll be here in the next few hours, Alison. Uh, they're expecting almost a royal flush here for the little princesses. Big day, uh, of course. William and Kate will be here, but also the Queen along with Prince Philip, as well as the proud grandparents, uh, Prince Charles along with uh, Carol and Michael Middleton. The latest on the Origin Decider and Sophie has the weather. Yeah, and it was around 2 degrees warmer right across the southeast today. Right now it is 17 degrees in Brisbane, 16 at Ipswich. Forecast coming up soon. Homicide detectives have launched a manhunt after a man was found dead with his throat slashed inside Melbourne's Crown Metropole Hotel. The grisly death saw parts of the hotel put into complete lockdown. One of Melbourne's most luxurious hotels, now the scene of a gruesome killing. This was Crown Metropole on Whiteman Street just after 2.30 this morning. A man in his 30s was found dead in a room on the eighth floor, slashed across the throat and in a pool of blood. The actual assault itself, uh, we believe have taken on a knife-wielding robber in the UK by barricading him in a shop as he held up a convenience store near Manchester. Witnessing the threats inside, 78-year-old Ron Smith held on to the door tightly before 72-year-old Robert Anderson spotted the drama and also turned vigilante. With no escape, the thief ran upstairs to a bedroom window, but he was no match for the Good Samaritans who caught the robber as he attempted to jump to freedom. Nearly a thousand Defence Force reservists braved a chilly start today to honour the great tradition of our part-time soldiers. This year's service commemorated 100 years of the Anzac legacy. Fighting spirit filling our city streets. Reservists, many grey and worn by time, but standards flying proudly aloft, stepping out precisely and a special theme for Reserve Forces Day this year. This is about the Gallipoli campaign and so many people uh, lost their relatives at that time. 100 years of... All right, we are going to throw to a break, but we'll be back with you very shortly. These little guys. But this month only, Holden's treating everyone as if they're a big business with Holden Fleet Pricing for All. Now you... ...operation went wrong in Colorado. The crackers began shooting into the crowd instead of firing into the sky. The event, attended by about 20,000 people, ended shortly after the mishap. Authorities say the injuries were minor. So-called marauding mobs of migrants have tried to storm the Channel Tunnel in an attempt to make it to the United Kingdom for a new life. The crisis is now at boiling point, following weeks of confrontations. The military has displayed its weapons of war ahead of our largest ever joint training exercise with international forces. In the news ahead, the Australian who fell from the sky, how the family of a D-Day hero found out about his courage 70 years on. Also $3.3 million for Sydney's most expensive home under the hammer this weekend. Where was it? Also no escape for an armed robber who encountered a pair of plucky pensioners. And talk about an appetite, the man who ate his way to a $13,000 prize. Now to our top stories this Sunday. A mother of three has died on her front lawn after being pulled from a house fire in Cabramatta. A woman is undergoing surgery after being attacked by three dogs outside a home in Doomside. Counter-terrorism agencies could be given greater powers to protect their sources in a bid to stop homegrown attacks. An historic referendum is underway in Greece as the people vote on a make or break debt deal. And the Blues have touched down in Brisbane ahead of Wednesday night's State of Origin decider. Pensioners have risked it all to trap a thief in the UK. 
A 78-year-old man saw this robbery unfold in Manchester and, with the help of a passerby, held the door shut from the outside as the crook tried to escape. The robber eventually fled through the shop, dumped his loot and then jumped out a window and into the arms of builders. He's now behind bars. As for the pensioners, they received an award from local police. They came, they ate, but only one man conquered at the Hot Dog Eating Championships in New York. Former eight-time winner Joey Jaws Chestnut on the left was dethroned by a younger, long-time rival on the right. Matty Stoney gobbled 62 hot dogs and buns in just 10 minutes, winning about $13,000. Coming up, Julie, with the weather. Thank you, Pete. Another gorgeous day in Sydney, but it is cooling off out there. Right now it's 13 degrees in the city. It is 10 in our west. Your forecast for the week ahead is after the break. It was a cold start to the day in Sydney before we enjoyed some beautiful sunshine. Cronulla recorded our top today, 19 degrees, 17 in Kellyville, Blacktown and Parramatta, while it reached just 14 degrees in Katoomba. Plenty of sunshine around the state for your Sunday. 22 degrees in Grafton, Dubbo and Mudgee both recorded very cold tops of 14 degrees. A chilly morning in Bathurst, just minus five. A weak cold front will bring a few showers and gusty winds to South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania tomorrow. A belt of high pressure will bring another cold morning to New South Wales and Southern Queensland as well. Looking around the country for your Monday, clear skies at a top of 23 degrees in Brisbane. Canberra can expect some morning fog and cloud cover before a top of 11 degrees. That cold front will bring some rainfall to Adelaide and Melbourne. A mostly fine Monday for New South Wales. You can see there on the coast, Coffs Harbour heading for a top of 22 degrees. Further inland, it will get to 14 degrees in Dubbo, 12 degrees in Mudgee. A little bit of cloud cover around Griffith and Wagga Wagga tomorrow morning as well. There is a very, very slight chance of rain in Sydney tomorrow. A mostly fine day on the way. 17 is our top. That's after an overnight low of 6 degrees. Sunny skies in Penrith, Blacktown and Campbelltown tomorrow. 16 degrees. Fine and 15 in Cronulla. 15 degrees also in Terry Hills and up there 17 in Gosford. Looking ahead and a high pressure ridge will linger over the Sydney metro region for another day bringing clear skies. From Tuesday we will feel a southerly change make its way along the coast. Showers are expected Tuesday and Wednesday. Midweek you'll notice the overnight temperatures start to drop slightly. 9 degrees Wednesday and Thursday. We might see some reprieve in the rainfall by Saturday before it returns for a cool 16 on Sunday. Tomorrow will be the last of the sunshine in our west, sunny and 16 degrees before those showers return. A, a cold front will make its way on Wednesday as well. A couple of night, cold nights on the way Thursday, 5 degrees and 4 degrees on Saturday before that rainfall returns on Sunday, heading for a top of just 15 degrees. So, Pete, unfortunately, I've got to say that gloomy winter weather is making its comeback. Julie, thank you. Not for the weather forecast. <laughs> Before we go, here's a quick look at what's in store on tonight's edition of 60 Minutes. Thanks, Pete. Tonight, that's tonight after The Voice. Back to you, Pete. Thank you, Liz. That is nine news for this Sunday. Apologies to our Queensland viewers. We had some serious technical issues in our Brisbane studios. I'm Peter Overton. I hope you have a good evening. From us all, good night.